Those of us who have only known Sam here in the United States uh, just have such a, uh, a richer understanding of why he was who he was, this beautiful person that we are here to remember and celebrate today uh, and everything that has gone into his life uh, coming out today in such, uh, such a rich and beautiful way. It's really been a tremendous uh, celebration of life, living up to the title of our meeting today. <clears throat> in the book of Matthew, Jesus says, I was a stranger and you took me in. Now that uh, has become a directive for uh, Christian people, all of us everywhere in the world, uh, individually and together in church configurations. Jesus came as a stranger and you took me in. I felt that that was uh, uh, directly addressed to the Royal Oak Corps back in 1985 when this stranger showed up, none of us expected him or knew him or had any idea that we would be given this uh, opportunity of getting to know Sam and Baki and Basie. And yet uh, here he was uh, all those years ago. And uh, we had no experience in welcoming uh, an immigrant, a stranger, a person that we didn't know from a very, very different cultural background. and. Uh, it was, uh, it was, it was quite, a, quite a, uh, an opportunity for everybody to just uh, re respond as we knew Jesus would want us to. Uh, as you saw through the photos that were shown and the various uh, things that have been shared today, uh, the Salvation Army Royal Oak Corps responded very uh, warmly to Sam. And he, of course, was an easy person to love and to, uh, and to embrace. And uh, it was beautiful. And people like Max and Ruth Wood and uh, their extended family and others in the church at that time uh, really figured out what, was, what, what we would do and how we would do it. And uh, Sam fit in beautifully to make his own contribution to this, this Christian fellowship. And of course, it didn't hurt that he was an avid musician. He was more of a band geek than anybody in the band at that time. And uh, we thought that was very interesting. And his love of music and army music in particular, brass music, it was, it was really fun to uh, watch him fit in and to build uh, his new life, different life, here in the United States. And uh, I wondered over the years, you know, what, what was it about his journey from Kinshasa to Detroit that, um, what, you know, what, what made him do that and what happened along the way? I'm, I'm, I could only imagine there were many stops and starts and detours and uh, other events that, that were happening in between the, the beginning of that journey and the end of that journey as it, as it resulted here. And a lot of that has been filled in today by what people have shared. And we have a very uh, beautiful and clear, clear, more clear picture of Sam's life and uh, what it was and how it was and how it came to be. Um, but all of us in our human existence are taking journeys of different kinds. Everybody's life consists of multiple journeys. Ask somebody about their marriage. Ask somebody about their job or their vocation. Ask somebody about raising a family. Ask somebody about what church do you attend or how's your health. And uh, you are likely to hear, well, it's been a journey. And in saying very little, actually we're saying a lot. Because that concept of the journey uh, has a lot of meaning to it in various aspects of our living. But there is one ultimate journey, of course, that we're paying attention to this morning. And that is uh, the journey of life that is given to every human being and the consequences, both temporal and eternal that go along with decisions regarding that life that we are given. The Bible teaches us that we do not take this journey, this ultimate journey alone, but that Jesus offers to walk alongside of us if we put our faith in him. 
The book of Hebrews uses Abraham as an example. And uh, you might say, well, wait a minute, Abraham lived then and Jesus lived then, so what's the connection with that? But uh, actually, uh, scripture suggests that if there were several places in the life of Abraham where uh, Jesus showed up in one form or another, and at critical junctures, Abraham, scripture suggests, encountered Jesus along the way. Well, the book of Hebrews talks about this, and I just want to share that with you this, this morning from uh, chapter 11, verses 5 through 10, talking about Abraham and his faith and his ultimate journey. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as an inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land, like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. Abraham, we are told, was on this life journey. His faith was with him. He took his faith with him. And it's interesting that the Bible says he was looking for the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. That's, that would be a very unique destination for Abraham to even have any idea about because we know that he was a shepherd, he was a nomad, he was a wanderer. What would he have known about foundations? What would he have known about what an architect does? What would he have known about building a city? And yet this city of God was what was promised to Abraham at the end of his journey. And I want to say this morning, I want to say it again. It's been said already this morning, but let me say again towards the end of this service that each one of us is invited to take this journey with Jesus by putting our faith in him. I think of the city that's described in Hebrews that Abraham was destined for as uh, actually being in union with God. And the Bible uses the term the city, and that's, that's language that we have a better chance of understanding in, 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 in our limited capacity. But what I believe what scripture is really saying and what is intended is that we are going to a place that we really don't know what it is or how it works or how it could even be. It's beyond our comprehension, but it's an amazing place. And we are gonna be in union with God at the end of that journey. And I kind of see it as maybe a family reunion, a reunion with the Trinity. God will be there with the Holy Spirit and Jesus is showing up with, with Sam, with you, with you, with you, and with me, with all of us someday. But like all reunions, um, and we've all had some form of family reunion, but whenever there's going to be a reunion, there are some practical questions that go along with that. Uh, who's coming? Who's going to be there? Um, Where is everyone going to sleep? How's that going to work out? Who's doing the cooking? On and on and on. We have these practical questions about this reunion that uh, some of us would like to have answered before we make the commitment. Maybe you're like that. Maybe you'd like some questions answered before you make the commitment about this reunion that you're invited to in, at the end of your ultimate journey. The Bible also gives us a picture of that as well. And I want to close with this. We think of Abraham's city that he was heading towards. Uh, we're told about another city in the book of Revelation, 
chapter 21, verses 2 through 5. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throng saying, now the dwelling of God is with men and he will live with them. This is what it's going to be like. And he will live with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. He who, had, he who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. The end of the ultimate journey. I'll see you at the reunion. <laughs>